Hey everyone, it is Evan here from The Trade Risk on Tuesday, February 12th, here with a midweek market recap video. We're going to cover all of the major markets and the current market environment. So we'll jump into our dashboard here. So we like to start our uh, view on these videos. I had a few questions asking where to get access to this. You can just head directly to the traderist.com forward slash market dash technicals. It'll bring you to this page. It's free. It's open. It's public. Uh, it only gets updated after the market close. So do be aware of that. But uh, you can bookmark this page and check in on it if uh, you like the view and format here. So if we take a look at performance uh, today, you can see it was a very strong session across the board, almost one and a half percent progress to the upside across all of the major indices. And we look at the five day change numbers still holding mostly in positive territory. And we are once again doing work recovering and reclaiming a lot of these key moving averages. Keep in mind the 200 SMA calculation here is total return data, uh, but you can see the indices are grappling with that 200 SMA and trying to reclaim it right across the board. If we go down here to the sectors, you can see semiconductors back to the top of the pile along with Dow transports and utilities are still hanging up there. Kind of an interesting mix, but uh, those are the top three performers. And on the downside, we have energy, biotech, and discretionary. If we look at some of the uh, other major asset classes here. We have US dollar up here, we have long-term treasuries, and we have the SPY. So a pretty interesting split here as well. Remember, it's just a five-day performance number, so kind of noisy and you know doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot, but it's at least a little bit of a snapshot we can look at. And then on the downside, we have emerging markets and China, the VIX, so a little bit of international weakness there uh, overseas. So let's jump into the charts now for the S&P 500 weekly time frame, This is where we like to start our analysis uh, of charts, S&P 500 weekly time frame cash market that we're looking at right here. And what we saw or what we're seeing so far is, of course, it is only Tuesday, but we're seeing that a uh, little bit of indecision, that outside reversal week, that, that slight pullback off of highs last week, that is uh, pretty much gone, evaporated. We are back to the highs. This trend is continuing to the upside now, ever since bottoming out below low 2400 in the end of 2018 Christmas Eve and we are back to our ascent towards uh, retesting say the top end of this range around this 2800 level it still seems to be a magnet right now that the bulls want to get back up there and test it or challenge it or potentially break out from it uh, but so far the market is back on course it's heading higher the macd on the weekly chart trying to get back into positive territory here it's been sloping up and heading higher again for the past uh several weeks now towards really the end of 2018 so when we look here at the weekly chart, otherwise, um, you know, that pattern of lower lows and lower highs is quickly being evaporated. It is still very thinly holding on. But, you know, if we get back up to that 2800 level, then we have a, a complete retracement of this latest price swing. We're already about 80, 85% there now. So, um, you know, regardless, uh, it is still looking fairly bleak here. Granted, you know, again, we have to keep things in perspective. It's not an easy chase. It's not full bull. You know, let's load the boat. Everything looks good now. Everything has to be taken, um, you know, with a grain of salt and understood of where we've come and how much ground we've covered. Um, so let's not misconstrue the sort of analysis here. But I think from just a pure price perspective, it is certainly encouraging the bulls are still holding on to this trend that could change at any time. But for now, it is not. So if we go down to the SPY ETF daily time frame now, look a little bit closer what's been going on here. In our last video update, we essentially had uh, a two and a half day pullback. We had this. We we had this multi-day pullback starting from Wednesday of last week, technically Tuesday kind of topped out, Wednesday inside day. Then we saw a pullback Thursday and then a partial pullback here or an intraday early pullback on Friday and then a reversal and strong close this past Friday. So we had this, you know, two and a half day pullback. We said, look, if that, um, you know, if, if we are to see sellers really take hold here, uh, we're going to want to see them below this 266 level. This was the top end of the range of the latest breakout. And we're going to want to see range expansion to the downside. We're going to want to see number of stocks hitting new 52 week lows start to uptick. We want to see breath start to uptick on the downside. That was the bear case. Those were the clues we were looking for coming into this week to see if the selling, if the pullback and if the pressure was going to continue 
continue and perhaps uh, stay for a longer duration. And we just got the exact opposite of that. We saw absolutely no follow through to this pullback. We saw a very quiet Monday session, and then we saw a nice push to the upside today of course, we had some news, right? We had government potentially reaching uh, some agreement to, to reopen. Um, we have China t talks that are, you know, who knows where they are at this point. But headlines are certainly, you know, surfacing and influencing price action here. Uh, but regardless, when we look here just at general price structure and trends we are still heading higher the s p 500 closed above last wednesday's highs here and again looks very much on the march towards 208 or 2800 or 280 here on the spy now one um you know one other scenario that could play out here just something to be aware of again not prediction just looking at all possible scenarios is a swift failure here if suddenly we come in tomorrow and we saw a quick loss of all of these gains made today if we saw just a total kind of reversal here and a double top if you will kind of a breakout peak of you know poke our heads above the past pivot high here from last week and then all of a sudden we drop hard tomorrow and into the end of the week that of course would change things um, you know at least in the short term but until or if that happens uh, again I think we you know we respect the prior you know price structure in hand here and I think that the next latest relevant level we can use is really just you know Friday's lows to 67.83 that's kind of a line in the sand now uh, for an upper level support that we would want to see this market hold above so that uh, i think really kind of covers uh, thoughts broadly on the S&P 500, 280 to the upside, near term 267, 266. This zone in here is our upper level line in the sand. And then the big one is around 260 or so from a more intermediate term support level uh, that we'd want to see the market hold above. If we go to the IWM next, you can see this is well on uh, kind of the races back up towards, um, you know, December highs here. It cleared above, you know, yesterday or last week's pivot with, uh, with authority kind of gapped above it strong close 1.23 percent volume you know not not anything heavy today on this move higher but still price is heading higher it looks like it has a date to retest at least the swing high here from 154 155 which is a couple of points above us bulls have that momentum and trend certainly at their back we go to the queues here next you can see this is now one of um you know the few here i think the only if we look at the dow yeah the dow's kind of there if we look at the queues now it looks like it's standing alone in the sense that it did not take out last Wednesday's uh, swing high here. So maybe this is your slight clue here, subtle clue, that something's changing. Maybe the cues are going to underperform here. But again, really nitpicking, uh, most broadly speaking, things look pretty good right now. The cues haven't broken out yet. If they don't tomorrow, if they start to roll over here and never take out these highs, that could be interesting. Something to keep an eye on for now, though. Uh, most of the evidence here is still supportive of the bull case. But again, that can change. So that is the market recap there on all the major averages. Let's go to some of the other major assets here. TLT, still not doing much. Uh, in fact, I like it. I like the fact that it's still just working sideways here in between 120 and 122. More time it takes in here the better for a potential breakout and a tradable breakout. So I'm still watching this kind of light volume consolidation in here. Give it some time uh, and just watch those uh, those nearby kind of goal posts. If we go to oil next, you can see Nice rebound uh, off the open. It did fade a bit into the close here, but you know structurally, it's still kind of hanging out in this zone here, the sweet spot, if you will, between this you know call it 1070 and about 1150 or so, a little less than a dollar range in the USO that it's just been kind of comfortably trading at. Nice little balance area there. So still waiting for some resolve update today, but uh, didn't quite hold on to those gains. Go to natural gas next. We talked about this potential kind of wedge here that was forming. Uh, uh, said, you know, look, uh, natural gas is one of the few markets that are just making new year-to-date lows for 2019, something that is not a good sign. You want to kind of um, 
be sort of pessimistic on the outlook when we have stocks making new 52 or new year to date lows. Uh, but we talked about, look, if this could accelerate very quickly and with some authority and volume back over 24, 25 area, that might be constructive. That could be an interesting reversal signal there for natural gas. It almost looked like we were going to get it on Monday off the open, but that failed. And then we kind of had an inside day today. So there's some potential here, but still it's, it's a tough you know there's just better opportunities out there from what i see anyway but there could be some opportunity here i just like to see a nice punch right through 2450 move it to the upside and maybe something can get going there in natural gas last but not least we go to metals gld here still kind of uh consolidating pulling back off of highs taking its time consolidation's been on very light volume it's still holding the the latest relevant trend here from the mid november so for now bulls continue to hold on here We'll see if they can uh, step in here soon and soon and continue this trend. And silver, kind of the same situation here. It's still holding its relevant trend lines back from you know the end of December or mid-December or so. It's kind of right on that level. Does have potential to break down here on silver if we don't get some stabilization. But generally speaking, swing highs, swing lows still in place. Still own a position here in silver myself, so uh, do have that long bias on this uh, asset. Uh, but we'll see if bulls can step in here soon and continue this move to the upside. So that is it. That is what I have for the midweek video. Hopefully you guys are doing well out there. Thanks so much as always for tuning in and watching. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel or follow us on the Traderist blog, traderist.com forward slash blog. Thanks so much and talk to you in the next video update.